Okay guys, today we're going to be looking at the best axe and saw combo for starting out in bushcrafting. Now, there's a lot of talk in the bushcraft community about knives and what the best beginner knife is, what the best budget knife is, what the best knife is, and that conversation can go on near endlessly. A conversation though that has a little bit better or more definitive end is the axes and saws of bushcrafting. There's a little less choice and a little bit more um, definity in it. It's certainly a less of a talking point, more of a this is what you should do and these are the things you should get. So I thought I would do this video and discuss. Sorry, the bugs are horrible out here right now, but I thought I would do this video and discuss just that topic and kind of explain why you should pick these types of tools and you know what to look for. So we're gonna start off with the ax before we go over to the saw because the saw is pretty basic and generic. Now this now this is a 20 inch Holtzbrook Anabi or Anabi, however you want to pronounce it. <laughs> however you want to pronounce that ax name. Um, but the core of the conversation is regardless to what brand or what maker you you go with the size of the axe you get around the first axe that you want to get or the best all-around axe is going to be a 20 to 19 inch handled axe with hopefully a two pound head or around pound and a half at least but around a two pound head and like I said anywhere from a 19 to 20 inch handle now the reason why I recommend a smaller or like a small forest axe sized axe for the first or most all around tool is that it really truly is an all around piece of kit. This is a axe that is a really good uh, bridge between the hatchet and a more serious forest or felling axe. This size, like I said, bridges that gap well and allows you a lot of combinations of, or a lot of use. You can use this thing for limbing trees very well. You can use this to drop smaller trees very well. And you can use it to process and buck trees very well. And I have plenty of videos showing me uh, felling trees with this, uh, with this axe here in particular. Felling trees, limbing trees, and actually not bucking trees because I usually use a saw for that, but this axe can certainly do that. And I have done it, just haven't recorded it. So anyways, like I said, the most all around, all purpose tool or axe you can really start out with would be a 19 to 20 inch handled axe with around a two pound to a pound and a half head. This will allow you to do a lot of things in bush crafting. And while you won't be able to necessarily build the largest crafts, well, you won't necessarily be able to build the largest crafts. This axe should be more than capable for building a lot of shelters and things that you see like around me, such as you know this uh, element of cover here. And uh, hopefully it's not too far off the camera, but this fire reflector, which were actually built with my hatchet and a smaller saw, but this axe can certainly do the trick and can most definitely produce the results you want. And the other great thing about a axe like this is for a lot of people starting off, it's a very convenient size to pack in. So uh, you won't struggle as much trying to pack in a 20 inch axe. And in fact, even my fairly small, very old camelback linchpin here can hold this without any part of it sticking out. Granted, it is tight, but this does go straight into here without any problems, and I can still zip up this uh, backpack and carry it inside the backpack. So it's a very packable size, but yet when you pull it out of the backpack, this tool is very capable. Like I said, this thing can easily drop and fell uh, trees around four to seven inches in diameter. And that may sound pretty small, and maybe that is a little small for firewood gathering, but when you think about crafting, I mean, none of these trees behind me here that are in, that went into the making of this little cover element are more than three inches in diameter. So a lot of the practical trees that you're going to be using for building things are going to be, you know, around anywhere from an inch to about four inches in diameter. So a lot of the crafts are well within the range of this tool's capabilities. 
So that is the recommended axe. Now, like I said, this is a Holtzbrook Anabi, and I'm not necessarily saying that you should buy this axe in particular. It's not my favorite, but it is a really good, it serves the point really well of the size range that I'm talking about. So this is a good tool, but, um, and I certainly wouldn't say that you shouldn't buy one of these, but the Grand Forest Brook Small Forest Axe is another great option. There's also, as I'll be talking in future videos, uh, quite a few axe makers on Etsy that make similarly sized, handmade, hand forged axes in this range. So I'm not saying go with this Holtzbrook, and I'm certainly not paid by Holtzbrook. I bought this thing independently, but um, that size range is really what you're looking for. So now getting over to a little bit more of a specific tool is going to be your saw. Now, the, you don't necessarily have to go with the Silky Big Boy. However, I don't see any reason not to go with the Silky Big Boy. Now, once again, this has not been sent to me. At, uh, you know, this was sent to me free, but this was a gift from a fellow bushcrafter. I did not, you know, get this from Silky. They did not tell me to do this review and if you guys have been around the channel you'll know I've had this thing for about I think three to four years yeah I think about four years now so I've had this tool for a long time and like I said I'm certainly not paid to say any of this but the big boy in my opinion is one of the best saws you can get for all around and beginning bushcraft and that's simply because the size of this thing packed down is you know about 12 inches but then you can open this thing up and you have a 10 inch saw blade and this thing can do a lot of work. And realistically, uh, once again, you probably won't wanna do larger crafts with this tool, but gathering that wood that we talked about anywhere from an inch to about seven inches, this tool is going to do a really good job. Now there are a number of blade options when it comes to the big boy. You can get curved blades, you can get large tooth, medium tooth, fine tooth, you know, you can get all kinds of different blades. So you want to make sure you get the correct blade style for the correct style of bushcrafting or what your aims are. So uh, like so like I was saying, this is a medium tooth, silky big boy, but you just want to make sure you get the right tooth for the saw. But like I was saying, the big boy is probably my highest recommendation. They are a little spendy. I'm not going to lie. These guys do cost around $50 to $60. But even if I didn't get this one gifted, I would still go buy a big boy. It doesn't matter to me. Um, these are just really effective saws. They have plenty of traction on their grip. And once again, the biggest thing for me with the big boy is just it packs so small, but yet it opens up into such a big package that you can really conquer a lot of wood very quickly with this saw blade length. And this will not replace, you know, a 24 inch to, you know, a 30 inch saw blade, but it does a really good job at being an all arounder. And once again, if you're not going for those, if you're not going for those bigger pieces of wood, like those 10 inch and up diameter pieces, then the big boy is really where you're looking at because this thing can be, this thing can be packed easily into a backpack like this or oftentimes you guys will probably see that I use this a lot with my Maxpedition Jumbo Versa Pack. It slips right into a pocket on the side of the Versa Pack and the amount of capability it gives me for having such a small pack is, is pretty great. So that is the Silky Big Boy. There are different options. Corona Saw makes similarly sized saws and you know there are always knockoff brands but I would encourage the Silky Big Boy because this one in particular, the size and blade length and the tooth options that are offered by Silky, you know, uh, depending on what your applications are, do a really good job at processing a lot of wood. And once again, I've had this one for four years. Um, I cannot complain about it at all. It's a really solid saw and I've used it a ton. So these are my two recommendations for all around or tools, you know, an ax, like I said, I don't have any specific brands. The Anabi by Holtzbrook is just fine. The small, the small Forest Axe by GBA is widely a regarded and loved axe. So, you know, those are two uh, brands that I would definitely recommend. And of course, you know, the Big Boy by Silky is a very hard to beat saw for doing all around bushcrafting. So, so whether you're starting out in bushcraft 
or whether you're just looking to have a really versatile all-arounder kind of kit. This is my suggestions and recommendations. I know I started off bushcrafting with, you know, bigger tools, but that was back when I didn't really know, you know, exactly what I could make smaller tools do. And as I mentioned in other videos, you know, having smaller tools like these, they're not the biggest, they're not the baddest, but if you use some creative thinking and creative problem solving, you'll be very surprised at the amount of work you can do and at the speed you can do that work with these tools. So anyways, guys, that's all I have to say about my all-arounder recommendations. As always, God bless, and I'm out.